for Todd, a time of a round of applause for John and Todd Houston and Seth Connick here. I mean, here in the of ours. Awesome. Hey, we are so stoked that everyone is here tonight for Rocktoberfest. We know it's basically a huge, huge, huge climbing family reunion, and you're stoked to see you folks. Unfortunately, our acoustics in this room are pretty tough. It's a hangar, uh, not an amphitheater, right? And so if you're gonna chat, and you care to bump outside, that's rad. Uh, if you're gonna have like chats and hangs out, that's awesome, bump out to the back. But uh, we are here to listen to some awesome speakers. Our next speaker is no short of awesome. Uh, you probably have heard of him. This guy used to have the speed record on the nose of El Cap. He's got to the nose more than anyone else. He's no, uh, he told me to introduce himself. He's like, go set the speed record for uh, presenting the history of El Cap tonight. Please welcome to the stage, Hans Flory. Hey kids, thanks for being here. I appreciate heckling, which means uh, if you're talking in the back of someone else, you'll probably miss out on a chance to heckle me. Um, so hey, I think I said in a very off way there, like uh, go outside if you want to talk about something that's not me. I, I went around to all the lovely vendors, Petzl, Send, um, RRGC and I got stuff. I asked them for stuff that I can throw at you that wouldn't hurt you. Um, now the YCA is gonna do a cleanup on Sunday and I was thinking about throwing this out at you guys but that probably would hurt so I'm not gonna throw that out but Sunday we're doing a cleanup in Betaville. Um, you can come to our booth and sign up. Uh, we're gonna start at 9, we're gonna meet there. Um, I have my books there for sale. Oh, I'm on. Am I live? Am I good to go on the sound and everything, you think, for the computer? I can talk about my story. Awesome, cool. Okay, so this is how it works. I'm going to ask some trivia question like, you know, what rock is this right here? Okay. A big one! Yeah, cool. So whoever was the most enthusiastic, even if you mistakenly said half dome, I'd throw a chapstick at you, that, like that, okay? Or a hat or something like that. So it's enthusiastic answers that are possibly correct that count, all right? Um, uh, who knows what YCA stands for? Okay. Cool. Who, you guys point at the person who is most enthusiastic. All right, cool. You get a hat if it gets to you. Cool. Um, I was told I have 20 minutes to do the complete history of climbing, but now I'm down only seven minutes left because everybody ran late, so I better get going on this thing. Uh, let's see. Raise your hand here if you've ever uh, heard me speak before in uh, presentation style. Woo! Okay, raise your hand here if you've ever been to Yosemite. Shout if you've ever climbed El Cap. Woo! Raise your hand and yell if you've ever climbed El Cap with me. Yeah, Woo! yeah that's so cool. When my <laughs> this book, when it came out in 2016, I did my first show and it was in my local town. And I asked people, raise your hand if you ever climbed El Cap, and like three quarters of the room, because it was San Francisco Bay, raised their hands. And I said, how many people have climbed El Cap with me? Like 16 people in the room raised their hands. It's really funny. <laughs> Um, so I take a lot of people, or a lot of people take me up, I guess. Um, so I am going to do the history of just, not just Yosemite climbing, but only El Cap climbing. And I just want to be clear, I want to define something, because you guys are Kentuckians mostly, and you don't know nothing about Yosemite. <laughs> this is El Cap. That Woo! is this little teeny rock in the background of Yosemite that no one bothers with, okay? Um, we use cartoons to kind of educate you guys a little bit. You know, regular maps aren't so good. Shout out with enthusiasm how long you think the drive is from the Red River Gorge to Yosemite. 32 hours! Dang, there was a lot of people that got that close. 34 hours. Woohoo! Here's some chops. Chops are coming out of you guys. Okay. Who said 34 hours exactly? With enthusiasm, who did? Right 
This, this is my wife, Lisbeth, right here. I got tracking on her. She's at the YCA booth. This is my son, Pierce, down by Waco Tanks. If you guys boulder down there, would you look him up and take him out of the fort? It'd be nice. Um, all right, a little bit more about Yosemite. It is super crazy wild terrain that's very steep, but it actually isn't that um, high altitude. It's only 9,300 feet at the top, and the valley floor is 4,000 feet. And because of that, you get these, that huge change of you know, altitude in a short distance, you get to climb above the clouds there. It's really great for my motivational speaks to business and stuff, you know, you climb above the clouds sort of thing. Uh, but it's also cool for climbers too. Those people who have not been to Yosemite, there are no buildings in El Cap Meadow here, okay? Um, this is just for reference, so you see how tall El Cap is. The tallest building in the world is the Burj Khalif or the Dubai Tower, would actually reach right to here. It wouldn't be as tall as El Cap. So um, before we go into the history of the nose speed record, I'd just like to talk about the history of Big Wall briefly beforehand. This is Half Dome. It is not El Cap, okay? <laughs> um, you can walk along the backside along this um, railed trail and get to the top. Well, to put in perspective the climbing world, Everest was first ascended in... Before Half Dome was climbed. How's that for an answer? All right. How about an apple for you guys? Ready? Right. Thank you, Sen, for the koozies. There you go. All right. Um, 1953, Everest was climbed, and I point that out because that's the tallest, highest, most incredible mountaineering, but yet climbing objective. And it was not until 1953 that that was climbed. In 1953, they didn't dare think you could climb this sheer face. It wasn't until 1956 that they thought of doing it, and uh, I got some beautiful images from 1956 kind of just showing what was going on. They didn't believe you could climb a wall that big, but lo and behold, Royal Robbins, uh, Jerry Galwall, and oh my gosh. Um, who was the third on that? Anybody? Harding. Sherrick, um, yes. They climbed this route. <laughs> Five days they stayed on the wall. Warren Harding, a climber who had climbed with Royal Robbins but wasn't invited on that ascent and he was busy that day working, he hiked around the back met them on top, was known to congratulate them, and was also known to tell many people, now I have to do something to outdo those guys. So there you paint the original sort of atmosphere of the climbing rivalry between people. Now, if you look at the size of Half Dome compared to El Cap, if you put Half Dome right here, it would reach right there. Um, everyone knew that El Cap was unclimbable, too tall, you could not climb it. Um, after, well, it took five days for those guys to climb half down. After five days of work, Warren Harding got to right here on El Cap. Pretty uh, lame, actually. <laughs> but, uh, so Warren, he was working. He was a surveyor for Caltrans and stuff. And so he would come back and work on work, I'll say, climbing the route every other weekend or every other month. It was 18 months of work, going through dozens of partners 18 months of work, he finally got the ropes up to here on El Cap. And the Park Service said, look, you can't leave those ropes up there and you can't climb during high tourist season because there's all this traffic, so you gotta wait until November to climb. So on November 1st, 1958, he and his partners, um, oh my gosh, uh, you guys wanna call those people out? No, but that's a good guess. No. I will go on. <laughs> Read my book. Um, they got to here, right? So November 1st, they start climbing. And they go not one more days, not two more days, not eight more days, 12 more days. November 12th, they top out after basically 45 days of effort and they put up the nose route of El Cap. Um, 45 days of effort spread out over 18 months. And it was called, the nose route is 32 rope lengths long. It is um, absolutely incredible when you think about the tools that they had back then. Um, this, this rack here on Tom Frost in 1960, and we checked this out and did the math. This would have weighed 41 pounds. 
the rack that I last took up, the nose in a day, weighed like one-fourth of that amount. Totally crazy. Um, I point this out because when they did the first ascent of the nose, they did not have nuts. They had balls, but they didn't have nuts. Um, nuts did not come out until the late 60s. It is a wedge-shaped piece of metal, right? It's just silly, but they didn't have that until the late 60s. They were pounding sto actual little stove legs into the crack and pulling them out, or pitons. Um, and I mentioned this thing about technology changing over the decades because I'm going to talk to you about how the speed record progressed and was it, how much was technology, how much was the invention of things like this, climbing gyms. This happens to be Mission Cliffs in San Francisco. I show this because in the 90s we started actually having crazy competitions where ESPN did it, and that was me, and I won, um, of course. Woo! Maureen has to do the job. Chris Bryant is double hand signature dino on the nose, really. <laughs> Only in competition. Um, the, and he, quick reference, um, this route is um, 15 feet shorter than the World Cup route that they use now, and the record on that World Cup route is 5.2 seconds. Right? One third what it took us to get up this route. Totally nuts how fast they're going nowadays. Um, Important about things is the culture in Yosemite. This is a Camp 4 picture from 2000 when they put Camp 4 on the historic register. And I'll tell a quick story. My first summer that I went to Camp 4, it might have been the very first time I walked into the parking lot. This was 1983. Guy comes up to me all excited and he's like, oh, what did you guys climb today? This is like, you know, 6 p.m. in the evening, it's still light out, and it just was the end of the climbing day, and, he, and we saw we were all chalked up and climbing. What did you guys climb today? And I'm like, well, um, we did the Nutcracker. Oh, did you guys all free it? And I'm like, uh, well, I got three of the four pitches, and my buddy got it all free. Well, like, how long did it take you guys? I'm like, I don't know, I didn't time it. And like, now I time everything, like, including <laughs> diaper changes, but back then I didn't think of it. Um, and he goes like, oh, that's so cool, way to go, guys. I'm like, oh, this is one of those drugged out guys in Camp 4, right? He's just standing there with his hands in his pocket, looking at the ground. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, is this guy nuts? I'm like, oh, I get it. He wants me to ask him what he did today. I'm like, what did you do today? And the guy just totally animates. He's like, we went and did this route on the east side of the middle cathedral spire, and, and my friend, he got it for his free, first time free. And he's just like totally animated. It's like, and like, and we did it the first time. We did it in 15 minutes, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just... I'm like, wow, good job, man, you know, and I didn't know how to react, but I realized that, like, there's this sort of <laughs> childish sort of naivety, whatever, innocence about letting them to share with other people, or maybe burn them off, um, what you did better than them that day, or just they want to tell you what they did that day, and they're really psyched and proud about it. So this is a cool thing about climbing there, I think, or most climbing places, people want to share what they did that day. So here's my little PowerPoint thing of the timeline. Um, the second ascent took seven days. It was alpine style. That was Jim Fitchin. No, not Bridwell. He's too young for that. It was Tom Frost, Royal Robbins, Jim Fritz, and Chuck Pratt. And they did in seven days alpine style, which means they did no fixing. The third ascent was three and a half days. Leighton Core and Roper. Um, and then by 1975, incredible. Jim Bridwell, John Long, Billy West Bay did it in a single day. And this was incredible. It's the first grade six, or second grade six, actually, that's ever been done in a day. Everyone was blown away by this. And this phrase was coined, nose in a day, NIAD. It's kind of like if you're a CPA, accounting, um, you know, 
got to get your CPA, right? You got to get your NIAID if you're a big wall trad climber sort of thing. Well, by the late 80s, numerous people had done those in the day, and, and they loosely thought that the record was a little over nine hours by an Austrian and a German, and I didn't think that was really right, that non-Americans should own this record in our backyard. So I asked a guy with a German nickname, uh, Steve Schneider, if he would climb it with me. He was the best, most famous big wall climber at the time, and he said, you know, he didn't know me, and he was just like, all right, I'll do it, because I don't want you to get the record without me, you know? So I'm like, okay. So we went and we climbed it in eight hours and five minutes. First time we ever climbed together. Totally awesome. Woo! Yeah. And that's it, I'm out of time. So that's the history of the notes. <laughs> Sorry, okay, that's not the history of the notes. Some other stuff happened. Um, one week later, one week later, Dave Schultz and Peter Kroll climbed it in six hours and 40 minutes by Hans and Steve. Right? This was in the New York Times, the Denver Post, the LA Times, San Francisco Chronicle, all over the climate magazines. No mention of Hans or Steve, just these guys. New record on the news, you know. And we all thought like, oh, these guys are the dream team, immortal, no one will ever break this time, right? Well, the next year in 1991, this big giant of a guy, Andy or Andres Pubel, I call him, he towers, I'm six foot one, and he towers over me four inches. And we would trade winds at all these little local comps in California. And I'm like, hey, hey, Andy, I'm looking up. And Andy, would you come climb with me in Yosemite sometime so people don't think we're arch rivals? And Andy looks down at me and he goes, okay, let's go do that. And for a lark, we climbed the nose. And total lark, we decided to time how long it would take us to do the nose. And to our utter amazement, we climbed faster than the immortals. We climbed it in 601. Woohoo! <laughs> I wish I could end the story there. Um, I called my mom, told her to get ready to buy the newspaper because her son's going to be in it. <laughs> Less than a week later, Dave Schultz and Peter Croft climbed in the oh. um, An hour and 13 minutes faster than us. Those guys are totally immortals. You're just like, oh, uh, crazy. Um, so the next year, I went to a slideshow in Santa Barbara given by Peter Croft. And I, I went up to Peter Croft, and he's not taller than me. I said, hey, Peter. <laughs> Looking down at him. <laughs> um, that was a great show and stuff. And like, hey, would you climb with me sometime so people don't think we're arch rivals? He was like, no. <laughs> he was, I turned red. But he, he said, yeah, let's meet in Yosemite in a month or so, and we'll climb. And we're like, well, what should we climb? He goes, oh, let's climb the nose. So Peter Croft here. <clears throat> Um, we show up and um, all right, we'll climb the nose, and we do it in four hours and 22 minutes, right? Woo! I wish that was the end of the story. <laughs> so one week later, I, I didn't call my mom, by the way, because I just figured Dave Schultz and Peter Cross would be it the next day. One week later, we still had the record. One month later, we had the record. One year later, we still had the record. Five years later, we still had the record. It wasn't until nine years later that Timmy O'Neill and Dean Potter cranked it out in 359. Whoa. These guys were the new dream team, right? All the new tools, these cool little camming devices and whatnot, and they just totally aced it. So I thought that it'd be really neat and historically consistent if like one week later someone broke the record. <laughs> So I'm like, I call all my friends and they're all married with children working 50 hours a week in the city. <laughs> and it so happened, I was too. But my good friend Jim Herson, who's an amazing crack climber and, and dad, <clears throat> he goes, I can do it, but not next week. I gotta wait two weeks. So he sends me this picture of him training for El Cap, right? <laughs> in California, this just doesn't go down. He would get busted by the parent authority. But we went out and we climbed it in 3.57, woo! Yeah. Um, just sleep by in two minutes. And um, off the couch, two dads, not bad, huh? Well, <clears throat> Timmy and Dean didn't have that historical perspective nor respect for us that we had, and so they didn't wait a week, and then I think it was two days later, they went and climbed it in 3.24, <laughs> totally smoking fast, and this was, like all over the paper, Dean and Timmy, no one will ever break this record, the new blah, 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 blah. And I, I believed it, kind of, because I'm like, ah, you know, I'm a dad, I can only beat him by two minutes. 
Well, lo and behold, in 2002, and I'm checking my time. Ooh, um, 2002, my good friend Yuji Hirayama shows up from Japan to try to free climb the Salape. And I'm like, Yuji, the best thing to train for that is to go up the nose with me in a day. <laughs> so we do, and we didn't get the record. We did 327, it was three minutes shy, but Yuji was so enamored by how quick we did it. He said, let's do it next week. So I went down and worked for a week, came back up, and the next week um, we went, and his buddies went up to the top and shot this video of him topping out. So this is Yuji after 2,900 feet of climbing, just cruising up, running it out 20 feet on a 510 crack. I, this, so, strangely enough, word had gotten out that we were doing this and hundreds of people were down in the meadow. And their voices were yelling up at us. And I was so exhausted and so anaerobic keeping up with Yuji that I could barely speak, but I wanted to yell back at them something, right? But I was totally out of breath. So the week before we did in 327, we were three minutes shy of the record. This time there was nobody on the route and we did it in 248. So, um, if you don't speak Japanese, we have some subtitles here. And Yuji's a pretty funny guy, not only a world-class climber. <laughs> So we get down to the meadow and they're sticking cameras in my face and I'm always willing to talk, right? But yeah, I feel really happy. I think it's going to be really hard for someone to go faster than us. Yeah, unless there's like two UGs going up together. Really hard. I think this record lasts for a good long time. Three. All right. Thank you, Mehmet. I think it's Mehmet. I hope it is. That gave me the sling. Um, who knows who got the record after us? And Stanley, Sean, Larry. Good job. Right here. They didn't use that sling, by the way. Um, probably would have gone faster. So what was crazy is that not only did we get in the paper for breaking the record, but we got lots of press. It was just amazing, right? And I meant to say, anytime the RRGC logo comes up in the pit thing, you should yell, but you probably wouldn't have <laughs> Dizzy Vantage wristband, there you go. Um, so this was crazy, and what the problem with this is that now it was a thing to get the record on the nose, so guess what? Professional climbers from the Europe came, and this is Tomas and Alexander Uber, and they were, they rented out a house in my neighborhood, and they were just going at the route day after day, month after month, and I came over to give them tips, and they, and they like tried to get my kids to smoke cigarettes and drink beer. It's totally crazy. <laughs> Super funny guys. Um, if, if a picture is worth a thousand words and a video is worth a million, here's the Uber Brothers. In 2007, the nose race was shaken up by German climbing stars Alex and Tomas Huber. First, we thought speed climbing is a stupid thing, or it's an American thing. 
I don't want to say American, <laughs> it's the same like stupid, but it's, we don't like it. But we found out that we are sport. And we like sports and uh, of course we are ambitious and we want to do this. How was that? They didn't mean to insult us, but uh, crazy. Yeah, so in classic style, all this history of Americans getting the record and then these guys just nail it. Um, and it's so funny, Toma, uh, Alexander, the younger brother, he emails me and I happen to be in Italy in the Tyrol area where they normally climb. He goes, hey, was your record something something in 30 seconds or 50 seconds? And they had actually beaten our record by 20 seconds, so they went and did it again three days later and beat it by a full three minutes. So, <laughs> hardcore guys. Well, um, to be clear, I was very friendly with them and gave them advice and all this. And um, I said, hey, can I, <clears throat> when I fly back, are you guys still gonna be in town? And they're like, yeah, I wanna take you out for a beer, right? So I took them out for a beer and <laughs> I actually had this helmet when they passed me during a, a test run. I was like, go Ubers. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like this wagering guy, and I bet one of my friends, I said, you know, someone's going to break our record. 248 isn't that fast. Someone will break our record. He goes, no way. I bet you 100 bucks. I'm like, okay. So he actually sent me 100 bucks because someone <laughs> broke our record. And I brought it to buy beer for the Uber brothers, but <laughs> it wasn't enough, okay? Um, their turn. <laughs> So while I got them drunk, I asked them how they did it, and then, of course, the next spring, me and Yuji, you know, spoiler alert, we went and broke the record again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hundreds of people showed up in the meadow, so I'm just gonna run this video of it. So this was like NASCAR. When we got, it's an hour hike to get back to the valley floor where all the people are. When we came through the trees, it was total NASCAR scene. <laughs> Uh, that was Brad Gobright, that little kid there. You gotta be inside to know that joke, but anyway, um, he did go get the record. Well, sure enough, um, local boys, Sean Larry and Dean Potter, they, they, they wanted some of this. And if you've seen the Real Rock Tour, they captured it beautifully, so I'm just gonna play this and let it speak for itself. <laughs> Who knows how good? We got it. Congrats on top, and we're like, wow, holy crap, we just broke the record. By like 20 seconds. By 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> The fastest is the fastest, even if it is 20 seconds. It's pretty sweet owning the speed record on the most famous big wall route in the world. I don't have that right now. I'm sure Hans has been training since the second he heard that the record got broken. Yeah. See, I had a secret weapon. I had the kids cheering me on, right? Um, who broke the record after Dean and Sean? You! That's right! Awesome! Thank you, Petzl, for that shirt there. That's a women's shirt, so you're going to have to hand that off. Um, and a spoiler alert, I just blew it. Um, so I... I talked to this clown on the right here. <laughs> he was trying to get the record with Yuli Steck, and, he, and I was like their mentor. I'd call him on the phone, oh, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, and they, they did really good. They did it in like three hours, hunters. Um, and, <laughs> but they didn't get the record, and so Alex sees that Sean and Dean got the record, and he knows I'm not gonna let them keep it. And he's like, hey, uh, you're not gonna go get the record with Yuji now, are you? And I'm like, of course. And he goes, could I do it with you? And I'm like, wait a minute, let me call Yuji and see if it's okay with him. 
Um, and this guy doesn't know anything, right? Like I have to point to, I have to point to where the top of El Cap is for the guy, right? Total, total Gumby. I mean, he free solos and all this stuff, but he doesn't know where the roots are, right? And, and he works so hard to keep up with me, and I'm like 23, I don't know, I'm, I'm way older than him. I was almost double his age when we climbed this thing. And like, I'm just in my dress shirt, and he has to have his shirt off because he's getting so tired. He's just nuts, right? Uh, but uh, I don't have any footage of us climbing because we just did it too fast. Uh, we, we got the record in 2 hours, 23 minutes, and 46 seconds. Ooh. Yeah, I had to tow this total slug man, Alex, up. It was tough. Uh, but this is classic. You know how I'm like totally trying to tell Yuji the time on the watch, and I, I'm out of breath all the time trying to yell and verbalize stuff? It just never changes. At the top, this was actually the picture. <laughs> What's going on, Hans? You guys notice this? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sen Koozies. There we go. Black stuff coming at you. Um, does anyone know who got the record next? Go That's right. Go Brad Gobright and Jim Reynolds. Reynolds. That's right. Total badasses. These guys are so funny. These guys. You want to know who the best climbers in the world are? The ones having the most fun, right? <laughs> Totally cool, yeah. Well, I was happy to see this picture of Brad at the top. <laughs> Same as me, totally just wiped out, giving it 100%, right? These guys crushed it two hours and 19 minutes. So incredible. And I'm sorry I don't have footage. It felt like stealing from Real Rock, so I didn't get any footage of them. And um, that's not the end of the story. Uh, now, this is just too easy, who got the record next, so I'm just going to go to it. These two crazies, um, this is them at the top, like, I told you the guy was a total wanker, like, he's just like checking out little scratches on his knees and stuff, and I'm sure Tommy had to guide him up there, he would have gotten lost, right? Anyway, um, there's this incredible time-lapse video of them, and again, I didn't want to steal footage from Real Rock to put up there, um, but these guys are amazing, they broke the record by Brad and Jim Reynolds, um, and they did 2.10, and then they did 2.01, and they're like, that's not good enough, we gotta break two hours, so they did it in 1.58.07. Totally crazy. <laughs> um, I I'm a numbers guy, so I just wanna share real quick some things, like how the record kinda went down from that 1992 time all the way down to 1.58, and um, I like to calculate little math things, this is Tommy and Alex, 25 feet per minute, so four, minute, four feet more. Per, and here's a comparison. Um, the World Cup climbers that are climbing that 55 foot route in 5.2 seconds, in one minute, they would have climbed 350 feet. So they are just totally cranking compared to us punters on El Cap, for sure. Um, that is the history of the nose up to date. I don't haven't heard of anything faster than that right now, but you know, as soon as my, I get out of here, it's done building cabins, I'll be back on it. Um, <laughs> this book I have at the YCA um, thing, it marks my 100th ascent of the route. Um, and what's more important that to me is that it took 83 different people that I climbed with, and that's so fun that that was the case. I got to, I don't know, enjoy and experience that route with that many different people. The, um, yeah. That was really good. This is, um, this is from the American Alpine Club. It's one size fits all, they tell me. There you go, right there. Oh, and I got these pencil patches. I'm gonna see if I can spin those out there. Oh, that yeah. doesn't work. That doesn't work. <laughs> so this was really neat. My sponsor, Outdoor Research made this numbers chart like the Access Fund has done and other people have done. And what's really interesting about this is like 76 wag bags. That's poop yeah. bags. Um, 25 cups of coffee. I'm actually not slow enough to drink coffee on the route. This was driving to and from um, the Bay Area to get there. Um, this is really important. This is number of bales. I failed to climb the route 11 times in the first 100 times I attempted. Uh, raise your hand and yell if you're one of those first hundred and one people that climbed the route with me. Yeah. 
There we go. He was, one the he was the one over first, Mark Heidemann. Um, oldest person, 62 years old. Youngest person, 11 years old. There's actually 11 and 12 years old. Um, anything else interesting? Yeah, I've actually hauled on the route and slept overnight on it many times. Uh, let's just move on. More important than the numbers of ascent is the community, right? And the people and the encouragement you get from other people. And this was really interesting. Tom Frost, who was on the second ascent of the nose and the first ascent of the Salade and all these other incredible first ascents, he came to the base and bouldered up the third class with me and Yuji and me and Alex and kind of wished us well and took some old black and white actual 35 millimeter film <laughs> pictures of us. Um, and he was, the night before me and Yuji went for the record run, um, Tom, he's like talking with Yuji and he's like, Yuji, um, you guys really think you can take 10 or 15 minutes off the, 10 or 15 minutes off the record? And Yuji's like, yeah, Tom. And you know, he totally respects Tom. He's like, yeah, Tom, I think we can. I, I think we can do that. And then Tom goes like this. <laughs> and I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. And Yuji finally gets it. And he goes, oh, Tom, like when you did the nose, you got the record too, didn't you? How much time did you take off it? And Tom's like, uh, six weeks. <laughs> So let that be a lesson to you. Be humble. You take a couple minutes off, you do the 514A, and your buddy does 514B, be humble, okay? Someone's outdone you somewhere. And um, I hope you guys come and support RRGCC. The right outside of the And the YCA, and if you have questions and answers for me, tough, because I'm off the stage now, but you can come see me at the booth. Everybody give it up one more time for Hans again. Yeah.